Hello, and welcome to the Gamers Experience, where I'm taking you on a journey of my favorite 100 PC games in chronological order. This is more than a review, but less than a full Let's Play. This is where I share my games with you for, you know, for a while, show you some gameplay, give you, share, share you some thoughts. And uh, today, we're going to talk about Dragon Wars. I believe this is the ninth episode now. So we go from, you know, uh, pirates to submarines. To, yeah, last time, I believe, we were landing uh, stealth fighters onto an aircraft carrier. And now we head back to the land of fantasy with Dragon Wars. And it was a, a very interesting game here. Let's take a look at the wiki entry here. So... The uh, Dragon Wars was developed by Interplay, and it was released in North America on 1989 on the Amiga, the Apple IIG. Uh, there was an NES version, Tandy, which is what I played, DOS version, I also played that. It's a single-player, you know, RPG, and definitely uh, inspired by Bard's Tale, Wasteland. Uh, it says the designer of Bard's Tale series, Wasteland and Battle Chess, pooled their talents to create the ultimate role-playing fantasy. They do had to be first-rate story with sophisticated graphics, and the result was Dragon Wars. So, uh, very, very, uh, very interesting uh, game. Uh, reviewers in Dragon Magazine uh, gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Uh, and uh, Computer Gaming World said that it had notable improvements over the Bard's Tale series with tire design, attention to detail, balanced combat, and a carefully carefully constructed plotline uh, make this a game worth playing. Um, so this uh, that, now what's really cool about interesting for me, but anyways, about this game is is it had I believe a demo mode, a demo out there, and I played the demo to death. Uh, you know, back in the day, we used to buy shareware discs. You would get catalogs, physical catalogs in the mail, which would list all these different shareware games, the majority of which were just were just demos. Some of them were games made by people in their basement and such. And you would go and pick which disc you wanted to buy. Because they were shareware, it was legal to copy them. There wasn't any copy protection on them. So what I would do is I would get orders from what everybody wanted. I was kind of like the order taker. And then when the games came in, I made copies for everybody. It was really cool. I had my own little little thing going on there. And I didn't even charge them any extra for it. But Dragon Wars was one of those games that when you play a shareware game, you only get the first level or two. It wasn't unusual for me to play that first level or two to death. Now, I hear people play, like, uh, Final Fantasy, a full-blown RPG that runs on a good day, 20, 30, 40 hours. And I've heard of people who've done multiple run-throughs of that with different types of parties, finding all the secrets, challenging themselves, speed runs. I never really had that kind of time. I have too many other hobbies and things going on in life. So instead, um, I would do that sort of thing with the shareware demos. It only lasts an hour or two. So when you're bored, you load up another shareware demo that you played before and see if you could do it with a different party or do it faster or, or along anything along those lines. So Dragon Wars, as you're going to see, was very colorful, captures the mind, captures the imagination, and uh, it definitely... Uh, definitely was cool in a lot of uh, ways and I felt like in retrospect looking back on this I, I feel like it's one of those Einstein classics I mean most people who've been around the block for a few decades can tell you about their times with Ultima or Wizardry even Bard's Tale but few people know about Dragon Wars and it's a, it's a shame one of the things you'll notice here let me let me minimize myself again real quick here and if you take a look at this uh graphic here, i'll zoom in on it this uh this right here this artwork is by i believe his name is boris vallejo you can google him up but he did a lot of high quality fantasy uh paintings and the such warning uh some of it is uh, for mature audiences only with some uh naked people in it i mean really isn't a whole lot separating some of these people anyways from uh being rated r but it was beautiful beautiful work another little interesting side story about phil was my family was mostly pretty conservative i guess in a manner of speaking i mean we didn't really we weren't really big churchgoers or anything but mom wouldn't swear in the house there was no liquor uh, you know that and the such 
certainly there was no uh, late night soft porn television. Uh, you know, we were very, very kind of restricted in those areas. But one day, my mother, who would buy me uh, occasionally, buy me comic book cards, which would have pictures of the characters and stuff on them and statistics on the back. Bought me, uh, brought me a set of cards, and I looked through them, of course. It was for my birthday or something. And they're all Boris Vallejo paintings. I didn't know who Boris was at the time. I had to do some research later on. And, yeah, some of those were very, like, harpies with nothing on at all. You know, <laughs> it was like, wow, mom, whoa. So <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty funny. I still have those cards uh, to this day. Hmm. Half tempted to go grab them, but... Uh, you can you can find plenty of, of Boris's uh, art uh, just on the uh, the internet. I'll make sure that's his name real fast since I keep throwing it out. And we do have yeah, Boris uh, Vallejo. It's B O R I S V for Victor A L L E J O. And yeah, pulls up a whole bunch of images that will probably get me into trouble on YouTube. So we will close that. But yeah, check that out. Uh, anywho, let us talk about Dragon Wars some more, shall we? So we've got the old uh, GOG client um, loaded up here. And like always, I like to start with some of the documentation, which I did not have access to back in the day. So let us see if we can uh, see if it's uh, done. It was downloading. Oh, it's still downloading a couple things. Let me see if I got extras downloaded for you guys. Because I knew I have... A folder here anyways one of the nice things about GOG is that you can save your stuff into uh, for all time and eternity including the exe files there is no copy protection we do love that so we have the manual right here and we're gonna pull that up and just take a look see so we got more of that Boris Vallejo art right at the beginning and we're proud to present Airplay's third game in a line of quality products the first game was entired was entitled Neuromancer uh, which I never heard of, and then second release was Battle Chess, which was pretty cool for its time. It is now my top 100 because Phil sucks at chess. Never really liked it. So we got this beginning story. Orbiting the star is Sirius, millions of miles away from any other intelligent life. A tiny ball of hot water is home to an amazing adventure. Sirius is three times the mass of our own star and 60 times brighter. Its huge bloated mass spans the entire horizon of the humid world of Oceana. Oceana is a world, 85% of water and getting wetter, as the baleful fury of Sirius erodes her diminutive polar caps year by year. Oceana is a world younger than her own, wedded to a star with but a fraction of the life expectancy of soul. It is a world burning, in the can burning the candle at both ends, enjoying twice the light and half the time, and spinning all the faster towards the annihilation and the void. Her surface is dotted with 10,000 islands. Some are home to thriving citizens, while others are all that remains of greater achievements long since sunk beneath the waves. Oceana is a violent world of capricious storms, where natural geographic barriers and hostile sea life hold people and empires apart. In no time of her history has Oceana known unified rule. In all the islands of Oceana, the most fabled is by far is Dillman, the land where the sun sets. Located on, the score, uh, located on a score of nautical charts, each time in a different place, Dillman has, is always just over the horizon. It is the home of all that is best of Oceana, the home of her eldest empire, the seat of her finest culture, the lair of her most terrible beast. It is the Isle of Dragons and destination of pilgrims. Beneath Nizir, the mountain of salvation, is the secret horror of Magan, the underworld. As your adventure begins, you find yourself aboard an armored pilgrim's barge, nosing through the still waters of a silent fjord, nearing the moment where you will drop a plank on the isle you believe to be Delman. Perhaps you are pilgrim in, such a, in search of peace of enlightenment, or an adventure in, uh, on the trail of fabled a treasure, or a weary mercenary seeking retirement in eternal slumber in the vaults held high above the waves. Hopes are as high as the incredibly ancient architecture of this isle's lone port swims into view. Rapture is just off the bow. As it turns off, purgatory is just off the bow. Rapture may or may not lie beyond the walls of the port city. No sooner does the pilgrim barge enter the harbor that she is boarded by city officials who quickly pull all crew and passengers under arrest, stripped of all possessions and wealth. One pilgrim and every ten is separated from the pack for sacrifice to the dragons. Your party is among the fortunate remainder dropped naked and defenseless into the slums of purgatory, there to fare as you will. 
The armored barge is confiscated and made part of Dillman's rapidly growing navy, a navy that will one day sally out across the seas of Oceania, at long last bring in her beneath the heel of a single ruler, a Namtar, the beast from the pit. Uh, back to the basics is one of the most dangerous neighborhoods anywhere you know you have had. A well-intentional traveler, you are treated like a beast by Namtar and co-signed to a life of perpetual poverty and purgatory. No one escapes purgatory alive, and a few know the luxury uh, to die in bed within her walls. Stirring hip deed in mud, you must use every trick to stay alive, much less worry about sticking it to the beast from the pit. Well, with a, with a name like Beast from the Pit, he, he must be a, a, a bad guy. So this is giving you some tips, and you'll want to read through this uh, carefully um, uh, about creating your party and the such, what the different uh, statistics do and the such. So you'll want to look over uh, all of this. One of the uh, interesting stats in here is, I mean, most of this is, is pretty much uh, self-explanatory, but stun is derived from health and represents the ability to resist damage before a, con a character falls unconscious at a stun value of zero. Characters generally run out of stun before they run out of health. Stun fully regenerates following every melee. You'll find yourself taking a lot of stun damage in the game, but it really isn't serious unless the whole party gets stunned at once. So you do have a stun bar. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's just take a look at it. There's a lot of skills in here. Climbing, cave lore. They always felt the need to put a whole bunch of skills. And you always end up asking yourself, am I really going to use cave lore? Am I really going to use swimming? Or is it going to be something that only pops up once? Ugh. Gotta hate that. Which skills should you take or not take? Uh, and then we have a lot of information here on, on magic. The magic spells are pretty cool. Lots of magic spells to pick from. Magic for your magic. So, and a rough rough map here of how to get around. around. And then, of course, very much like D&D, you've got paragraphs where I imagine uh, through the game, the game will tell you go and read paragraph X, Y, Z. So you'll have to come to the book to read it because they couldn't fit this all on the disc. It was just too much text. Lots and lots of text. So, wow, got a lot of paragraphs in here. We're up to 150. There we go. And then, of course, our lifetime warranty. So we'll have to uh, see if that lifetime warranty is still in effect. I have to give the call to this number. <laughs> well, we're not going to do that, but that would be fun. The game also comes with a quick reference card telling you how the instructions and work, and we'll just keep that open just in case we, we need it. And then we also have the clue book, which uh, I would highly uh, recommend. Uh, you know, the clue book, I love GOG. Again, they give you all the extras when you buy the game. And clue books are awesome. They're professionally made. And they do generally do a decent job of giving you hints without giving away every single thing the way an FAQ is designed to. That way you can, uh, if you get kind of stuck, look at the hints first. And then if that doesn't work and you still can't figure it out, then by all means, knock yourself out and read an FAQ. So with that being said, I think we're ready to uh, jump into Dragon Wars. And uh, except, oh, it's still downloading, it would appear. This, this thing is updating another game. How rude. Can we pause that other game? Because Dragon Wars shouldn't take that long to run. You know what? We're just going to, you're going to see this live right here on the Gamers Experience. We are just simply going to install the game just like this. Actually, let me just, I thought I played it before. It's not been that long since I played it. Dragon Wars. Nope, we don't have it. So we'll go ahead and install it because I've saved these EXE files from a long time ago. So we'll install this outside of the Galaxy client and just jump right into it. Boom, there we go. So if you give me a second here. I'll get the graphics on the game itself set up, and we will jump into it. Let's see, we want to do VGA, put the mouse off, save configuration, and begin. We got some music there, which I don't know if you can hear, but let's, um, let's see if we can get you guys onto the proper screen. So to do that, we have to tell our recording device to turn off the monitor instead, capture our gaming window. Boom. And then we blow it up, and yes, boys and girls, it is in fact 
Dragon Wars and all of its glory. One of the things I really like about this game, straight away you can see it's bright, it's beautiful, colors, lots and lots of colors. There we go. Alright. Nobody likes you, cat. Doing a show right now. Don't need you interrupting. So we got a current party here, and I believe there's a way to make your own party. Um, just not really sure where that option would be at. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Rename, delete. Yeah. So a lot of the, the commands in here, is, it's keyboard commands. We're going to delete these four guys. Um, that's part of the fun is making your own. But like, there's a D there for delete feb. And if there's ever confusion about what uh, what character you should press, you're gonna have to look at the hint guide or press a lot of buttons on your keyboard. But it didn't believe in using the the arrow keys. So make Phil. Phil will be like one of your front frontline uh, fighter dudes. So you can see you got like a point cost system here. And I really think it's interesting how dexterity and spirit and health uh, cost more uh, than intelligence and spirit. I, I, you know, that's one of the things I think D&D &D needs to do because uh, we we're playing 5th edition and we even have dexterity-based fighters because ultimately dexterity affects a lot more things than strength does. It affects how your armor class, it affects... Um, it affects how well you dodge fireballs and the such. And since you can use dexterity-based weapons that do more damage with higher dexterity, why put points into strength? So if strength cost is only half as useful, maybe it should only cost half as much. Maybe you'd have more people take it there. So you want some spirit to help you, uh, a little bit of spirit anyways, maybe not a ton, uh, to, but a little bit so that you don't totally suck against spells. Uh, health is, is helpful for a fighter, of course. And the other thing is you, you need some points to put into these guys here. These are all your skills. You really want a lot of these uh, spread out for the most part. He's the, he's the big strong fighter dude, so let him be the, the guy who handles the fist fighting. And it's really that easy. Oh, hell, I forgot. There's a whole nother page. I need to subtract some points somewhere. Shoot. Screw tracking. Let's take another point or two from these two guys. So we have some to put into our weapons. Because I really want this guy to be able to use a weapon. Throne weapons, flaces, more swords, high magic. So just good old fashioned one handed swords. Here we go, one handed swords. Probably gonna need that. And bows for range damage. So we have zero points left, we're all set, and let's see, we need uh, another fighter type. No races here, pretty straightforward actually. They didn't, uh, they didn't really spend a whole lot of time on this, did they? Uh, you know, not a lot of races here. Give them some health. Pretty much gonna do the same thing we did with uh, Phil. Uh, we can give him some different lore. Maybe he's the guy who hides and tracks. But we'll give him sword and a bow. We'll make him Mason. Mace, Mace dude. And I mean, one of the cool things is this isn't very flexible, right? If you want to have a paladin, let's say we want to make him a paladin, right? So we're going to need to take some points out of these categories, uh, put a little bit more into spirit so that he has a little bit more spell points to work with. Maybe not that many. Uh, paladins aren't great for their skills, that's for sure. But what you want to do is you want to put it into, I believe it's sun magic for healing, low magic, high, well first I think you have to do low magic. Um, do putting a point in low magic unlocks the other magic. So eventually we get him to sun magic. But we're we're slowly making him into a a cleric slash slash a uh, fighter dude or whatever. So essentially, uh, a paladin. But you can do that. You absolutely can do that. We're gonna save that point. 
Uh, go ahead, make a, a cleric y person. Forget exactly how intelligence uh, factors into the spell process. So, because uh, you may, you know, most D&D games, you think intelligence is mostly for wizards. Spirit or wisdom is mostly for um, clerics. But if we take a look here at intelligence, it says, ultimately, your character is only as intelligent as you are. The statistics measures abstract intelligence. It's important for learning spells and solving puzzles. Also affects your chances of successfully hitting opponents with a spell. So probably need to give her some. Maybe not quite as much as the wizard. Put the emphasis on spirit. And we need somebody with some of these lures here. Definitely she's your bandager. Give her a mace. Give her low magic. We don't have enough left over for sun magic. So we'll save that for next time. And then we have our wizard. We'll definitely have the more intelligence, but still gonna have some spirit there for magic points. Feel like a little extra lore there. Oh, arcane lord, definitely arcane lord. Okay, and then so. She could definitely pull off like high magic, druid magic. We're gonna go for high magic, she's a wizard. And really we've made our characters that fast. So we hit begin the game here. Stripped of all your possessions and wealth, you've been trapped naked and defenseless into the slums of purgatory by the order of Namtar, the piece from the pit. Clearly the bad guy, because he's the piss from the pit. No one escapes purgatory alive and few know the luxury to die. The luxury to die in bed within her walls. We've we've heard that before. So we finally get to use the arrow keys. So we got a we got a three D dungeon crawler here, and we've taken one step and have already gotten into a fight with uh, five bandits who are thirty feet away. So we can fight quickly, fight, run, or advance ahead. Uh, I'm gonna run and see if I can get away. Dave, Phil, everybody runs away. Okay. Now I think about it, we should probably, if I can remember how. Hmm. This is where that quick, I was going to say, let's look at our inventory, shall we? To do that, I need to pull up that little cheat sheet that tells me use an item is the letter U. Maybe that's what I'm looking for, the letter U. So let's try. Boom. Phil. Item. He has no items. Oh, that would be funny. I guess they really, well, they did say they drop you in there with nowhere, so I guess I don't have to worry about equipping items. And boy, we've taken two more steps. This, this game's a hardcore. We've only got one fanatic, so let us fight the one fanatic and hope we get something. And uh, I think he was pretty close, so I think I'll attack. Celeste has no spells. Well, well that's just lovely. Our wizards, I mean, we really have nothing. And now he'll be in. 10 foot range and you just hit a goes really quick and if sound is working here you just heard it go eh. so Phil attacks the fanatic for one point and does one point of damage killing him and each member gets 20 experience points too bad he had no no items on him so one of the really cool things about this game is if you press the question mark look at that boys and girls an auto map that's where we've been so far it's actually pretty detailed i mean look it's got a little soldier representing me who unlike me he is fully armored that will help you to not get lost uh also help you in looking up the faq um to find out where you're at and where you should go next. Always, you know, if you're fighting, it, the, obviously there's a ton of random battles. If you fight somebody and uh, there's only one of them, you should probably take them out just for the free XP. You outnumber them four to one. Now, if you're the one who's outnumbered, 
you might want to run away. Speaking of, there is S for save your game. That is the magic spell you should be using a whole lot. Then we're gonna we're gonna look at the FAQ because we don't want to spend all day just wandering around while you guys are watching. And we're going to a modest shop. Do let's see. This place used to be nice before. I know purgatory like the. <clears throat> I'll read the, the hint book properly. This used to be a nice place before they sealed off all the exits and cut off the food. Now rats rule these streets, and I, Choplin, am a king rat. I know purgatory like the back of my hand, so you do well to listen to what I say. Your first priority on arriving to city is to get armored and get armed. You'll doubtless have a broad to immediately after your arrival. You should have little trouble surviving unless you're a total wimp. A good initial strategy is to strike almost due north from the main city square and sign up for the battle arena. You'll get the snot kicked out of you, but at least you'll score some weapons. Oh, you know what? I have never done that before. I have played this demo. Well, the first part of this, uh, Purgatory, I believe, was in the demo. And I have played this numerous times and don't ever remember doing the arena. Oh, we got a Wonder Boy here. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and kick the crap out of him. What people don't remember about Dungeon Crawlers, I think Etrianasi kind of forgot this, but battles were really fast. Uh, I mean, there were some really tough battles where you would take your time and absolutely, but a lot of them were just press the A button for attack a lot and collect your experience. Okay, so if I take a look at question mark, see if I can, see I really don't have enough map here just yet to 100% figure out where I'm at. Um, I might have a little bit of an idea, maybe not. We're gonna do what he says and just keep, try to keep heading north. You hear bloodthirsty howls from a great crowd north of here. So, so that's a, that's a good indication. We're gonna save just in case, and we'll go ahead and go in. Read paragraph four. So, we go back to that book we mentioned earlier. We'll move it out of the way, and we'll read paragraph number four. You have to scroll all the way back down to get to. This takes a second. Your game is important to us, and your patience is appreciated. By the way, in case you're wondering, just don't scroll really quickly in Adobe Acrobat. It doesn't like it very well. Okay, paragraph number four. <clears throat> you stand before the gate to Purgatory's great public arena. Bloodthirsty residents of Dillum Interior come here to enjoy the spectacle of outlander scum such as yourselves fighting to the death on the floor of the arena. A guard swaggers up to you. He is clad in the trappings of authority. Fine armor, a weather-beaten harness, well-oiled weapons. Oi, there, you filthy street scum, the guard growls. You look fit enough to hold a weapon. Why not haul your butt into the arena and make yourself useful? Why fight for another man's pleasure when life in Purgatory is a daily struggle for survival? You're about to turn away when the guard lays a heavy hand on your shoulder and adds, You'll get your choice of arms, and if you defeat your foe, which I doubt, you might win papers of citizenship. Namtar, help me, heathen dogs like you living in Dillum? I don't like it, but the law is the law. Ah, oh, he's a guy with a lawful heart. Do you wish to enter the arena? Yes. Excellent, says the guard, and I see that you are in need of some more equipment. You may choose 12 items. Well, we'll start off with Phil. And uh, Phil will take. Ooh, is a broadsword a two handed sword? Oh, good grief. Of course, I put my skill points into one handed sword. I always imagine the sword and shield type of do. Uh, can he pick some leather armor as well? We'll get Dave. Dave's the flail person. And we'll get him some leather armor. I don't believe there's any restrictions on wizards using you know leather armor bows and arrows for these guys don't forget to equip your items says the guard let the combat commence the words hardly finish echoing in your ears as the gate slams shut behind you and the roar of the crowds rages into a crescendo well, I'm glad you finally let me equip the items. Let's show you for use. Item. Broadsword has no use here. Oh, it's E for equip. Let's go back to our cheat sheet. 
Let's see, dismiss, cast spell, order is O, quick game, save game, use I'm or skill, experience green auto map, combat skills. Let's hear. I am trying to figure out how to equip something. Nobody knows how to equip something. Getting to just uh we'll just get into the mode where we just press everything. That is pretty funny. Oops. Combat pictures are disabled. So P disables and enables combat pictures as we found out. Um let's see, combat pictures are enabled. I hit C for I think C's for casting. X. X for experience for for distributing your skill points. Might need that later on if we level up. Wow, and then we have letter keys that also move you around, so avoid LJK. Okay, D. Nope, D's for dismiss, don't do D. Alright, we figured out. S is for save. Q is for quit. U is for use. Oh, press the number. <laughs> Journal overview, carried items, we got all the statistics there. Abilities, low magic, miscellaneous magic, general overview, uh, broadsword, equip the broadsword, leather armor, equip the leather armor, flail, equip the flail, leather armor, equip the leather armor. Great, did we not get him a bow? In fact, I guess four I got. Bow. Trade the bow to Dave. Give see if Dave can equip the bow. Bow equip the bow. No, you can't equip the bow and the flail. B equip the flail. Bow trade to Celeste. Celeste now has the bow. E trade to Celeste. Now has the arrows. All right. He's got a pick. I wonder what he's got a pick for. So, D, equip, E, equip, P, equip. That wizard's kind of useless in the back there, but hey, you've only got one save file too. That's pretty hardcore. Ooh, six gladiators. Wow, we're going to get our asses kicked. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you can equip a new weapon. New weapon. Bow, new weapon. Oops. Uh, let's see, we'll have him dodge, we'll have her attack, and we'll have her dodge. Equips the bow. Celeste shoots the guy, he's out of range. Really? She can't shoot him with a bow 30 feet away? Fight, attack. You must reload. Oh my gosh. All right, forget this new weapon, Bross. By the time you get it loaded, they're going to be on top of you, anyways. So, dodge, attack, dodge, fight, attack. And then you get to pick different types of blow. Attack blow, mighty blow, and disarm the enemy. And disarming the enemy might be the good idea here. She can't cast any spells, so she's pretty worthless. And the attack is blocked. Three points. Funny, I'm not taking any stun damage. I'm taking all kinds of hit point damage. Oh yeah, I'm taking stun damage. I guess that's the green bar. Might as well go ahead and let this guy stun us all. It's clearly, it's a, this is against us. The guard takes uh, the guards take your gold as a penalty for losing the combat. 
Well, that's good because I really didn't have any gold. Better luck next time, Snickers the Guards. And yes, as promised, we now have uh, weapons and such. So, let's see here. Favorite tavern is in the north. Uh, let's see. Magic is forbidden, but no one can stamp out the art entirely. You'll find a minus scroll shop due west of the statue of Nametar. Due west of the statue of Nametar. A bit of irony that. The scrolls won't do you any good unless you're skilled in low magic. If you intend to do any intense spellcasting city, you'll want to investigate the southeast corner town right behind the harbor wall. You'll find it refreshing. So we're looking for a school shop that's due west of the statue of Nametar. And I believe, oops, got the game covered up. Doesn't work very well that way. Oh, we got a soldier. Oh, we're going to kick his butt. Because dang it, we've got weapons now. Aha, we shot him with an arrow for three points. All right, we kill soldier and we got a gold piece. We are rich. Yeah. Oh, for the love of Pete. Advance. One of the things though is you like the graphics are really, really uh detailed. I mean even more so than the monster graphics we saw in D and D. And they got the animation going on. They look very cool. Hell, this is more animation than what I've seen in some modern uh, dungeon remakes and the such. And hey, we've gained a level. So if we take a look at that, wow, we got two whole points to spend. It only takes five levels to learn magic. Read paragraph nine. I believe that's the statue we're looking for. And paragraph nine tells us... A statue of Namtar, the beast from the pit, dominates the dirty city square. You carefully examine the statue, trying to memorize the features of the villain who exiled you to purgatory. You struggle in vain. Uh, the citizens of purgatory themselves are no less fond of Namtar, having taken it out on his image. The nose is broken, the limbs are chipped, and the mouth is deformed beyond all recognition. As you watch, a wild beggar spits on the statue. Filthy face of stone, she mumbles. Lay down with lizards, he did. That stone face lies as much as he does. The poor mad creature wanders off, spitting and mumbling, leading you to wonder if a similar fate awaits you in months to come. Because, of course, you're going to live for months. Read paragraph number 10. The back alley building is a remarkable good repair. Curious, you enter and recognize the interior of a modestly appointed magic shop. A wise and gnome of a man springs from behind the counter, scurries up. Mercy me, mercy me, customers, customers at last. The old man is insane but friendly. He explains that all high magic has been outlawed by order of Namdar. But instruction in the low arts is still permitted in isolated regions. He is eager to teach you much of what he knows and will, in fact, refuse a fee preferred to teaching for the simple joy of it. Unfortunately, the man knows little useful magic. So, let's see if we can get Charlay some mage light, mage fire, disarm, charm, luck. And let's her heal. Celeste. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And Dave, who took some low magic. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And Phil probably can't learn anything, but that's not going to stop him from trying. Hmm. Well, that was remarkably. So can she cast? No, we have to actually learn the spells uh, first. We have to use an item. So Charlie has to use an item. She has to use a uh, lesser heal and succeeds. So now, Charlie, if we hit C for cast, we've got lesser heal. We can cast it on Phil. And he now feels better. And boy, is it lesser heal. Holy crap, it gave him one hit point back. Wow. Just, um, yeah. Well. At this rate, hmm. Uh, let's see here. Use Celeste item. 
mage fire succeeds use four But now we can at least the wizard can burn the crap out of somebody. Now he mentioned that if you want to restore your magic, there is a pool in the in the corner in the south. I believe I remember where that sort of at from when I used to play. Of course, getting over there, you'll use up half your magic points just uh, in random encounters like this spider. But now she can cast combat spell mage fire unfortunately no cool fire animation to go with the cool spider crawling animation oh for a little Pete yeah you have to really love random encounters because there's a lot of them here read paragraph 77 77 sounds like it would be pretty far up. Uh, amid the ruins, you come across a remarkable sight. A bonfire illuminates the Shire City Square. Scores of people covert about the fire. This is the greatest gathering of people you've seen since arriving in Purgatory. The occupants of the square constitute a cross-section of the citizenry. Blind beggars, mad poets, dog-faced children, drunken priests swarm about the fire like moths of the flame, drinking, singing, loving bleeding brawling above all of them seated in a rude throne of sack masonry you see a man you surmise to be the king of this place if he is a king he is a king of thieves it's down by the strange sight you do not notice until it's too late a score of scandals sneaking up on you surrounded by rogues you are urged towards the fire where you come upon the gaze of the figure of the throne outlanders the king roars teetering on top his peerless perch You've strayed far from your homes, little does and kittens. This is the court of miracles. Gather to pay homage to King of Purgatory. The king pauses, awaiting the proper moment before continuing. Me, Choplin. I've heard that name before. Choplin growls. There is no honest man in the court of miracles. You will be punished unless you are a thief, beggar, or tramp. Do you describe yourselves as thieves, beggars, or tramps? Sure. Read paragraph 8. Of course, there's no true tellers, he says. So, I'm sure he won't mean anybody lying about that. The great cry goes up as you debase yourself. In a city of criminals, what shame is there in going native? Just to make sure you feel home, the beggars beat you steadily for a week. Properly initiated in the world of uh, mendacity, you eventually are set free to wander the streets of pur purgatory, better understanding, and is not entirely fond of the city's lowest class of citizens. Did they teleport me somewhere? I swear they teleport me somewhere. So what you want to do is you want to go as south as you can. South is the goal. And you come right here. Oh, David's dead. Whoa, Purgatory is mean indeed. They beat the crap out of poor Dave. Well, huh. This pull does re-energize you, but it doesn't resurrect the dead. So poor Dave there. Uh, apparently I should have healed because uh, it looks like everyone took some damage there and Dave died as a result. Maybe I should have uh, chose a different option there. Uh, saving is your friend with the one safe spot it gives you. But anyways, that's Dragon Wars. Now, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't recommend this game. I'd recommend you play the Gold Box D&D games I showed you earlier before I would recommend um, recommend this. But hey, if you ever uh, if you ever want to go and try it out, it's it's a few bucks on GOG. It's a piece of history. It comes with a, with a hit manual, so that will help you out a lot. And uh, it, it, it definitely is very colorful and original and according to reviews a bit more balanced than some of the older dungeon crawlers you might have played so you might want to go and check that out uh, dragon wars so we've been landing planes we've been doing some fantasy stuff but we have yet to go boldly where no man has gone before our next show will be super cool and super interesting because it's going to be star trek the 25th anniversary edition so i'm looking forward to sharing that with you and share my stories about that with you. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, if you are, I'd love to uh, hear from you. Leave some comments down below. Shoot me off an email. I'm at twitter.com forward slash jcservant. At jcservant. Love to hear some direct tweets. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. And enjoyed spending a little time with Dragon Wars with me. Hopefully you have a great day. Have fun playing games. <laughs>